Welcome everyone, this video we are going to start our discussion on loops. Loops are very cool because they allow us to do something in code over and over and over and over again automatically. But you know what you're not going to want to do over and over and over again? Fail at technical interviews. Because who wants to do a technical interview more than once, right? You want to land that first one, right? So in order to do that, you need to check out our sponsor, Pramp. Pramp will help you own that technical interview by going through questions on data structures and algorithms, as well as a variety of other topics. So if you need to solidify your development skills and your computer science skills and your social skills all at once, go check out Pramp, guys. I'll leave a link for you in the description. You won't be disappointed. All right, so let's loop back to what we were talking about. <laughs> so stupid. In order to repeat something in code, we need three pieces. And I remember these using the acronym ICU. So let's just make some comments here. The first thing we're going to need is an initialization of some variable. And we're going to use this variable to keep track of where we are in this loop. The next thing we're going to need is a comparison. And then lastly, we need an update. So to translate this into English, <laughs> we're basically going to start some variable, often known as an iterator, at some number. So let's say we start at zero. And then we're going to say, hey, while this number is less than 10, for example, that's a comparison. While it's less than 10, we're going to do something and then we're going to increase the value by one, which would be updating the value. All right, so that probably still wasn't English if you're new to this. <laughs> so let's just go through an example. The loop we're going to talk about today is the while loop. And it looks like this. Inside of these curly braces, we are going to put some expression, similar to an expression we would put in an if statement. This is where the comparison piece comes in. But you can see that's the second thing on this list. So the first thing we need is an initialization. So we might up here say int i equals zero. By convention, the iterator is often called i. You can name it pickles or tomatoes or salsa or cheese. You can name it whatever you want as long as it's some form of food. <laughs> All right, now let's put a comparison in here. So we could say i less than 10. So while i is less than 10, we are going to do something. So here's where our code goes. At the end of our loop, we're going to update the value of i, which is this third piece right here. So we could say i plus plus. That's going to increase the value of i by one. So that is the structure of our loop. If we run it, you can see that it does absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's because we're not actually executing any code. So we need to put in some code in here to do something fancy with this loop. So for example, we could say, hello, and we could say that 10 times. Cool. Each time we go through the loop is called an iteration. So each iteration, we are printing the word hello and then incrementing the value. This i variable that we're using for all three of these pieces can be used within this while loop. So to see how the variable i changes, we could print out the value of i. So let's just print i there. Run this, and you can see it counts from zero all the way down to nine. It's a total of 10 numbers. You can use this i for all kinds of creative things. For example, we can keep track of what iteration we're on. So to do that, we can start i at one and go up until i is less than 11. And then in here, we could say iteration plus i. We run this and we get a list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that is the foundation of the loops. We have the initialization, which we give a value to this variable. We then compare this variable to some number to see if this evaluates to true. More generally, this could be condition. It doesn't always have to be i is less than something or i is greater than something or i is equal to something. We don't always have to compare, we just have to put some kind of expression in here that is only going to evaluate to true on occasion. So condition would probably be a better word there. Most of the time though, it's going to be a comparison. Then we put our code, then we update our iterator, which is a name you might hear for this variable here that goes through these pieces. Now let's go through an example of how we could use a while loop to make something cool. Let's try to get someone to guess a password to get into an application. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a string and this is what they need to guess to get access. Now we need to get some input and make sure we include scanner, which is in java.util. So that will put a new import statement up here. Then what we need to do is create a new variable to store the value that they type in. So we'll call that guess and we'll just do scanner.nextline. All right, you guys have probably seen that a thousand times if you've gone through the series. 
Now what I want to do is I want to keep asking them for a password as long as the password is incorrect. So let's say they go in there, they type in chicken nuggets, it's false, and then it says, oh, nope, not right, guess again. So what we're first going to do is we're going to print guess the password. And then in this while loop, we could basically say, hey, while the guess is incorrect, and in order to do that, we're first going to check if they're equal and then invert it using the logical not operator. So we say guess.equals and pass in password and then put an exclamation mark at the beginning to negate it. So basically we're saying while they are not equal, then what are we gonna do when they're not equal? We're going to ask them again. So we're going to print this out again and then we're going to get another scan, but this time we're just going to use guess. We're not going to put the data type there. So guess equals scanner.next line. Then after they get it right, we could say congrats. All right, let's give this a try. Guess the password, tacos, chicken nuggets, pencils. What could the password be? I don't know what the password is. Goodness, let me in already. All right, there we go. <laughs> so that's fun. <laughs> One of the downsides of this loop we have here is we kind of have some repeating code. Like we have this thing twice. And basically anytime we have something repeated twice or more, that's a bad sign and there's usually a better way of doing things. <laughs> I also just noticed I got this warning here, <laughs> which I've never actually addressed here. So when you open a scanner, when you're done using it, you'll want to do scanner.close <laughs> and that will free the memory for that scanner. Worst case scenario, we just make some huge memory leak and our program never works, so not a big deal.